is on mute, sorry. <laughs> Impedance matching is important for both digital and RF analog circuits. For digital circuits, reflections can distort the signal resulting in data transfer errors. Impedance matching is a crucial aspect of RF PCB design as it ensures efficient power transfer and signal integrity between RF components, transmission lines, and antennas. Proper impedance matching helps minimize signal reflections and maximize power transfer and optimize system performance. Characteristic impedance, which sometimes written Z0, refers to the inherent impedance of a transmission line or the impedance seen by a signal propagating along the transmission line and is determined by the physical dimensions and properties of the transmission line, like its width, thickness, dielectric materials, and relative permeativity of the substrate material. And I'll show this in a short demo afterwards. When the characteristic impedance of the transmission line matches the impedance of the source and load, known as impedance matching, it reduces signal reflections, maximizing power transfer, and maintaining signal integrity. Okay, I'm gonna show a quick demonstration and for this, I'm going to use Microwave Office, which is a cadence tool that we represent at EMA for RF circuit design and analysis. It allows me to create circuitry in a schematic, to be able to take that schematic and also be able to import data from a, from a PCB itself or to export the schematically created structure back to the PCB. We also have the ability to do simulations in the of the 3D structure and be able to verify the, the copper analysis of that. So this is what I'm gonna quickly show you in, the, in my demonstration. Okay, so for characteristic impedance, what I've done is I've taken and created a very simple schematic. This schematic is just a, 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 a circuit line, you know, a, a, a basically a basic circuit and I'm creating a port at this side and a port at this side, and I'm gonna measure the characteristics of this 400 mil circuit. I'm using a stack up for the simulations, which, which, are, which, matches, um, which, uh, which matches the uh, Rogers material type setup, okay? So this schematic, this is what we call a closed form simulation. I'm not actually looking at the structure, copper structure to do the simulation, but I'm just using this as individual elements. And AWR has a wide range of elements that can be used for simulation. If I look at the results in my graph here, and I'm gonna sim what I'm gonna do is simulate, okay? And then look at the results of my graph. Oh, excuse me, there we go. Okay, what I'm showing you is a Smith chart. Now, Smith chart has been a way to be used to, to do impedance matching and impedance calculations since the 1930s. Basically, what it does is this particular Smith chart is set up for uh, 50, 50 ohm impedance. So the line, if you align at the center, means that your circuit matches that. The reason I'm seeing a circle is because the this, this circle represents, I did a sweep from two gigahertz to 20 gigahertz. And the, so they're actually, the structure has different impedances depending on what the frequency is. I've also set this one up to do what's called tuning. So for tuning, you can see I can change the width of my trace. I can change the dielectric constant, or I can change the height of this, basically the thickness of the substrate. And you can see here that by changing these numbers, I actually can change the impedance characteristics across the frequency range. It's also possible for me to be able to go and create a frequency range which matches 50 ohms across the entire, uh, entire spectrum from two gigahertz to 20 gigahertz by being able to shirk the, swing that circle into it. So this is just a quick demonstration showing impedance matching and showing the use of AWR's tuning capabilities to do that. So you can see the number, by the way, the value was 10, the value was 10 for the substrate length thickness. Okay, so now, by the way, I. Uh, expanding on, on uh, the uh, stack up information, 
Uh, some of the information that you saw that Emmett gave was based on a webinar that, that CR Networks did a couple of weeks ago on stack up materials. If you want more information, you can go to that one. Okay, let's talk about RF trace design. For effective RF trace design, aim for the shortest trace lengths to lessen attenuation. Routing RF traces requires special attention to the distance between the lines. Don't run RF and nominal traces parallel to prevent interference. I sometimes say the copper becomes more and more important the higher the frequency is. Ground planes are necessary for signal return paths, including solids, continuous copper reference planes on adjacent layers that shield the RF signal from noise coupling and radiative losses. And avoid placing test points on traces because it disrupts the competence matching. When it comes to transmission lines, you'll typically see designs using microchips, strip lines, and co-pairing wavelengths. Avoid sharp rate turns on the traces if possible. You'll get better performance with gently curved bends. And if you cannot avoid right angle bends, use metering to, as shown here. Microchip transmission lines are popular and, and commonly used in RF PCB design because they are simple and easy to fabricate. These transmission lines have signal trace on the top and a return path or a ground plane uh, at the bottom. A dielectric material separates the signal trace and the ground plane. The trace width and spacing, along with the dielectric constant of the substrate material, are carefully chosen to achieve the desired characteristic impedance, as we show, have shown in the demonstration. Strip line transmission lines the signal trace is embedded between two parallel ground planes, giving the transmission line a symmetrical shape and offering two return paths for the signal. The signal trace is routed on the inner layer of the board and is surrounded by dielectric layers that separate the trace signal from the reference planes. Strip line transmission lines increase signal integrity 